Today, we're taking a trip down memory lane and looking at 10 of our favorite batshit crazy bosses in video games. You know, the ones that are extremely criminally insane. Now, just so you know, we limited it to characters that are technically humans, and we looked out for some of the most over-the-top, out-there bosses. There are a lot of them out there. We didn't want to go for the obvious ones here with this first video, so just know that if we don't mention one of your favorites, there's always next time. Consider this video part one in an ongoing series. Anyway, let's get started off with number 10 and talk about Irene Engel from Wolfenstein, New Colossus, and Wolfenstein, The New Order. Now, where do I start with her? She's got that over-the-top Hollywood movie, super sinister, corny, Nazi villain type thing going on, but what's interesting about her is that she's kind of like Emperor Palpatine. You know, she's evil, she knows it, and she loves it, and the game knows it too because it gives her lots of scenes to really kind of stretch that crazy muscle, you know what I mean? I mean, there's the purity test, from Wolf 1, uh, you know, when you're on the train. Very, very tense. She's really good at kind of sucking the life out of her room. And then, of course, you can't forget the scene from Wolf 2 where she puts the gun in your mouth, you know, and asks you to essentially taste the gunpowder that killed your friend. The fact that she always gets up in your face, it's, it's really creepy and unnerving, not to mention the fact that she's got a horribly mangled villain face. You know, from the first game when you made a robot grab her, long story. <laughs> Uh, and then also she cuts off your head. She cuts off BJ's head. She's sadistic, she's wild, she's crazy, she's unpredictable. So she's really a, a great poster child example of what we're trying to do with this list. Now over at number nine, if we are speaking of perfect examples, let's talk about Dead Rising because it's filled with batshit crazy bosses. If you're not familiar with the series, the bosses themselves are labeled as psychopaths. And, and there's so many of them. There's Adam the Clown, you know, the chainsaw clown from the original game. Uh, there's Darlene from Dead Rising 3, Randall from Dead Rising 2. Uh, they run the gamut from being like creepy and unnerving to paranoid and, and wild and over the top. There's parody, there's farce, uh, there's perversion, there's gore, and a lot of them are really memorable. I feel like everybody who plays the Dead Rising games definitely has at least one memorable character. And you know what's nice about them is that they all provide really different and refreshing boss battles. That's so, sort of the fun with Dead Rising games because you walk into a new area, you never know who you're gonna run into and, and just how batshit crazy they are. That's why we love them, to be honest. I saw what you did there. Now, over at number eight, let's talk about Sander Cohen from Bioshock. He was an artist. He's a theater guy, a showman, a writer, a sculptor, etc., etc. But he falls into madness and it is straight up unpredictable in the best ways in, in Rapture. He's a murderous psychopath accompanied by uh, these gory and grotesque poses coupled with theater and art imagery. And, and he's also super charismatic while spouting absolute nonsense at the same time. The artist has a duty to seduce the ear and delight the spirit. So say goodbye to those two blowhards and hello to an evening with Sander Cohen. He's criminal insanity with a penchant for the performing arts. I also, I mean, look at him. He gives me the creeps. The, that pale face, the weird creepy mustache. Now he's in Fort Frolic and it's one of the best areas of the game and it's unique because it's essentially all really his his weird disgusting artsy playground. It's really the, like the perfect horror area for the game like filled with jump scares and his over the top voice acting on your radio. Da, 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 da. And uh, also uh, he makes art and sculptures out of corpses. Hello, isn't that enough? Now? Go. But moving on to number seven, uh, Kefka from Final Fantasy VI. Definitely an interesting one because he's kind of like the poster child for a megalomaniac, completely over the top villain. He's like a genocidal court jester who opens up and gets more insane as the plot progresses and he tries to take over. And, and what makes Kefka so interesting and such a great villain is that there's really no rhyme or reason to his mayhem. In Final Fantasy, it's so incredibly common for the bad guys to have a greater reason uh, that they're doing what they're doing. And that just isn't the case here. Kefka isn't a victim seeking revenge. He's not a puppet to a higher power. He doesn't have some secret plan that's for the greater good. And he's just an awful, awful man and a real piece of shit just hell bent on death and destruction. And not only that, he actually does it. The dude manages to actually cause a cataclysmic event that just wrecks the whole world and you have to navigate it after the fact while Kefka acts 
as a godlike ruler of this now destroyed world. Now, like we said, when your main villain is out there just terrorizing the world and being an absolute maniac for nothing other than the sake of terrorizing the world and being an absolute maniac, uh, you have something absolutely special on your hands and it shows since we're talking about it here. But over at number six, we have Ramon Salazar, you know, the guy from Resident Evil 4. He's got that Benjamin Button thing, kind of. Like, he, he looks like a like a little baby kid, but he, he's got a wrinkly old face, kind of. And apparently he's like 20 years old, allegedly. Just, what? If you even scratch her, I'll break your bones. I always thought he came off as like a villain-ass villain, and I, I feel like if there was a maniacal evil doer support group, this dude would be there. I mean, he bought into the whole Las Plaga stuff, and, and of course Sadler's bullshit, and the dude got duped real hard. He also spends half of the game hitting up Leon on his radio and just talking shit, which does get kind of super annoying. Eventually, he turns into this very gross, typical Resident Evil gooey monster that of course Leon defeats, because he's Leon Kennedy, and really just anyone who's willing to just jump in and turn themselves into a gross, horrible, horrific, nasty Resident Evil monster, which a lot of the characters do, uh, that makes them absolutely batshit crazy. <laughs> now over at number five, we have a bit more of a subtle one, and that's Walter Sullivan from Silent Hill 4. Now, he was the victim of abuse and it is documented throughout the game and throughout your adventures in the room, uh, but he went on to kill like 19 people, including children. Uh, if you look into the game, there are all sorts of examples of him uh, getting revenge kills, uh, killing pet stores filled with people, animals, mutilations, everything. He's like a religious fanatic, and I don't want to go super deep into it because like he is like the main thing of Silent Hill 4, but you learn so much about him and he's kind of the star of the show. Like if you think about it, like with The Room and Walter Sullivan, you're in his world and you're really experiencing it. It's kind of like a weird boss battle with him, but just the idea, the concept of his character is just so ugh. But moving on over to number four, I wanted to do at least one like no brainer, obvious batshit crazy villain boss. And that is the Joker. Uh, whatever, like insert whatever game the Joker is in. Uh, you know, you can use the Arkham series, no problem. But uh, w what is there to say about the Joker? You know his deal by now. He's madness without a plan. He's like a dog chasing cars. He's an agent of chaos. But you know, there are various interpretations of the Joker, some a little more tactical and cunning than others, but still, he's always insanely smart, but also incredibly vicious and brutal. And that vicious and brutal can mean a variety of things. It can be outright horrific violence. It can be more of like a demented, twisted, cerebral thing, but he's perfect for this. And obviously he's batshit crazy. Like if I was in control of this video, if I was in charge of this list and I wasn't in charge of making this one, I'd probably make him number one. But anyway, let's move on to another really good one and talk about Psycho Mantis from Metal Gear Solid. Now, I mean, just listen to his name. I'm Psycho Mantis. The name alone kind of paints a picture of this dude. No one is named Psycho anything and is a nice guy. Mantis had it rough from the beginning though. He, he was born in a small village during the Cold War and his mother died during childbirth, which led to his father resenting him and blaming him for the death of his wife. Then after figuring out he had powers and accidentally uh, reading his father's mind and not liking what he saw, he decided to burn down his whole village, killing his father in the process. Maybe you shouldn't do that. He's kind of like a reverse Professor Xavier if you think about it. But then uh, the Phantom Pain stuff happened happened, which I don't think anyone actually gets because the story was kind of all over the place. Uh, he did start doing some good though, despite his messed up past, working for the FBI after the fall of the Soviet Union, where he would read the minds of suspected killers to see if there was truth behind them being a suspect. Supposedly, he went too deep into the mind of a serial killer though, and he actually adopted the killer's personality for his own, which started to drive him crazy. It was actually Psycho Mantis that brainwashed all of the soldiers on Shadow Moses Island who didn't want to willingly take part in the takeover. Obviously, as you know, Solid Snake defeats Psycho Mantis, ultimately leading to his death, and it's here you get to see how truly crazy he was. He said that he didn't really believe in Liquid's cause, but instead just wanted to kill as many people as he could because of how much he just disliked people and just how he thought there was no good in them. Eventually he does help Snake using his powers to open up a passageway for him to get to the next video game area. Uh, he said it was like the first time he used his powers to actually help someone and that it felt kind of nice. Maybe there was some good in Psycho Mantis after all. Hmm. A demonstration is over. Now down to number two, we have Pigsy from Manhunt. This dude creeps me out. I, I hate just, I hate looking at him. I mean, come on, he's 
barely human anymore and thinks more like an animal. Uh, besides a few basic words, he doesn't really speak, but instead only grunts and squeals like a pig. Because of him barely being human anymore, he's essentially just a prop for Starkweather snuff films in the game. Uh, killing must be super easy if you're barely human, I would assume. It's said that he was in a similar situation to James Earl Cash, and killing and the body count finally got him to where he was and drove him crazy, turning him into Pigsy. Uh, Starkweather must not have known how dangerous Pigsy really was, and he was kept in the attic of his estate. That is, of course, until you find him and then kill him, of course. Uh, you honestly may have been doing Pigsy a favor, honestly. It was it was truly no more human in him, and his former self definitely died a long time ago. Still, this is just creepy as shit, so let's stop talking about him. Now, down to number one, Senator Armstrong from Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. This guy is a different type of murderous, psychopath, batshit crazy dude. At the surface level, Stephen Armstrong is just your average shitty United States Senator turned US presidential nominee. A big, meaty man and overbearing presence in the game, so you knew he was gonna be a big bad guy, but you didn't know just how over the top he was gonna be. And man, did he go over the top, and it's a shock. Don't f with me, Senator! Now, while this isn't a Hideo Kojima game, technically, it's still a Platinum game, which means it went hard in on the anime bullshit in the best possible way. I mean that as a compliment. Not only was he a literal cigar-chomping bad guy, uh, not only was he an anime caricature of a US politician, not only was he the de facto CEO of the World Marshal, the big bad PMC company in the game, but he was also their biggest beefiest, most powerful warrior. Of course, taking his already pretty massive and powerful physique and enhancing it with nano machines in order to ascend to be even more powerful than the game's incredibly powerful cyborg soldiers. I mean, what state of mind you gotta be in to do anything like this? On top of being a nano machine imbued super soldier, his whole plan is revealed to you while he hulks out and he tried to kill Raiden with both a Metal Gear and then when that doesn't work, he uses his own bare hands. The dude is completely out of his mind and dead set on starting a series of wars to maintain power and the status quo, uh, going so far as to say stuff like, I'm using a war as a business to get elected and that in his new world, every man will be free to fight his own wars. What does that even mean? He's a total monster and warmonger and has absolutely lost the thread and is just purely driven by his ambition at this point, which makes him more volatile and dangerous than anyone else you fought in the entire game. Game. He's got his mind on like one singular purpose and it is definitely willing to do whatever it takes and destroy anyone in his way to get there and that just makes him an absolute lunatic and a wonderful villain. I was wrong. You're not greedy. You're batshit insane! But those are 10 of some of our favorite batshit crazy villains. Like I said, there's so much more to talk about, so we'd love to hear from you guys in the comments about your favorite crazy video game boss villains. Let's have a party. Let us know who you think is batshit crazy, especially considering we're gonna make a volume two of this video. But if you enjoyed this video, maybe you learned about a new game from this, clicking the like button is the best way you can help us out. And if you're new, consider subscribing and maybe hitting that notification bell because we put out videos every single day. But hey, as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.